I have uh, demonstrated a tendency of migrating to hills, and the naturalized citizens, citizenship is uh, uh, take, take, taking business over there. And it's because if you see uh, in uh, uh, before 2005, Nepal was 12 countries to pay remittance to India. I mean, so many people work here. So now, Indian uh, Planning Commission's uh, uh, a committee within the Planning Commission's reported last year that now Nepal is the seventh country to give remittance to Nepal. So it's not money coming from India, but the large chunk of money is going from Nepal. Because we, with the modernization, with the modernization, what is very interesting is like we need technical human resources. So from plumbing to chartered accountant, from medics, general medics to the medical professors, and every human resource is coming from Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. And what is there for a kind of tension now you can see in Nepal is like what people see here in Nepal is like they're they're, they're grabbing they're, they're grabbing all the <coughs> jobs. So it's a kind of thing. But they are not grab, coming and grabbing by force because we do not have adequate human resource and therefore they are taking it. That's okay. But if they prefer to stay in Nepal, then what would be the pro population of this island? So this is what I think uh, uh, creating more problem in integration rather, uh, ra ra rather uh, uh, causing a problem of disintegration rather than integration. So this kind of thing. This kind of problem cannot be resolved if we make South Asian Association of Cooperation as a very vibrant association. If these associations become a very private, and something like we start introducing what card, like in European Union, what is the problem in Indian coming and working in Nepal? What is the concern of the Nepalese population in Bhutan, Nepal, and Bangladesh? All is that. Okay, they remain Indian, they, 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 they remain Indian and have a car of South Asia, that's fine. It is no problem to work in Nepal. But there is an obligation, if they stay for a longer period of time, they should be compelled to change their citizenship into Nepalese citizenship. Otherwise, they will not be able to transact in the bank. They will not be able to open the industries. So it's because of that their money has already come to Nepal. So they have to drive in even the officials to get the citizenship. But if you make a kind of system that you can do the business with the Sarkar, with the Indian nationality car in Nepal, then why the person will be so, uh, uh, so, uh, keen to have the level of citizenship, and vice versa. Why Nepalese going to India will change their citizenship from Nepal to Indian citizenship. So these are therefore uh, fabricated problems, that's what I say. These problems are not realistic problems. These problems are the failure of the governments. So since government have not been able to look into this pragmatic patterns of the solution, therefore we are, we, we, we are suffering a lot of problems. So same problem. India and, in India and Bangladesh, therefore, they have uh, introduced this very powerful electrical fencing between them. And this is not good. That creates another problem. There are a lot of families uh, across the border, so they are not able to visit each other's family too. That's not a problem with Nepal. We can go and they can come. But then, we are gradually getting more and bigger Indian population. And there is a fear that one day, Indian population might be majority population. So that's how the tension occurs. So these kind of things are very, uh, very, very pra practical problems. Okay. So that is what is one of the serious problem of the SAR. So uh, if you see, I already discussed the guiding principle under Article 2 require the member states to extend cooperation. And cooperation shall be consistent with the bilateral and multilateral organizations means uh, that that is, uh, that is uh, a serious uh, kind of problem. So South Asia University was one best example I often, uh, I often say because I also part of that. So we had a serious discussion about that. Like, are you going to make one more Indian University or are you going to make it a South Asian University? So in 10 years, it already became an Indian University. And if it becomes an Indian University, the cooperation becomes other, other countries becomes very uh, uh, negligible. Had this university been uh, developed as a more regional universities, 
more people coming from other countries, more professors coming from other countries, and having its uh, kind of uh, regional setting in each country instead of everything bring together in Delhi and uh, uh, bring too many people in Delhi, which is already a crowded city, and bring 5,000 people from other, con other countries and keep in uh, uh, Delhi, it, it's a problem in itself. So since it disintegrated, it, 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 it also did not integrate, it became, so now the, the, the charm of uh, South, uh, South Asian University is already gone as people from India themselves started seeing it's a one more Indian university. But what is the problem? The problem within the academics in Delhi, when I go there, is a sad debate is that. It is named as South Asian University. Its regulations have been adopted as for the European. So you know how much salary uh, of professors in South Asian University uh, receives every year? Do, have you some heard? Do you have imagination what might be the salary? A professor in uh, South Asia University draws 65,000 US dollar a year. 65,000 US dollar plus residence plus labor. Uh, so sometimes I say that I am born very un uh, unlucky person. I work for the South Asia University. The time of the time of the when there was a time to be a professor, and then I was appointed as a panel of uh, 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 member of the panel to interview the professors. Okay, so all the law professors were interviewed by me, and actually I selected them. So I missed the chance. So my students are drawing forty-five thousand US dollar per month. 45,000 US dollars for a year. So there is one of my students from Chandigarh University. <coughs> she married, she, she is a South, East, South, South Indian, married to a Punjabi, and now she got that job. She, she, she is now assistant professor, will be associate professor maybe next year. So she starts getting 50,000 US dollars plus baker. So what is the output? 20 law students. Uh, 15 Indian and two Bangladeshi, Pakistani does not come, Sri Lankan does not come, and two Nepali and sometimes one Bhutanese. So this, and then therefore, when I go to the Delhi University, what they complain is like, what is this? We have been teaching from morning to evening, and then we draw 100,000 Indian currency a month. So it's something like a 15 lakhs a year. But the guy does not teach a single class a day, then he or she receives 65,000 US dollars. So what is this? So then I say that it is not an Indian, Indian university, it's a South Asian university at the international standard. So how can you compare with the professor in South Asia? Then what they say is like, but then why they are behaving like Indian then? Okay, so that's why I mean the post is like uh, another university. There is no difference between master degree course of Delhi University and the South Asian University. Everything is same. The same judgment of the Indian Supreme Court is discussed. So that's again, we fail in South Asian, South Asian University. SACTA, it didn't work. It, it has outlined hundreds of items, hundreds of items of uh, uh, trade without daily to go to open market in India and from India, from into Nepal. Uh, and then we do also have a, a 2014, uh, the Bangladesh, Nepal, India, and Bhutan motor vehicle transportation agreement, according to which passengers and goods can go to each country without barrier. Okay? So what happened was like, okay, according to treaty, we open. I'll go to for the Indian writers, but our writers cannot go to India. That's very interesting. And simple reason is like security. Now we cannot stop them. You can go to Kathmandu. If you want to drive from Delhi in your car, you can come to Kathmandu space. But we cannot cross the border. And when we ask like it's a treaty, why cannot go? Why cannot we uh, go to Indian territory? Because we have a treaty. And then the simple is like that treaty is that treaty is very respected, but it's because of security treaty. So same problem in Bhutan. All Indian vehicles go to Bhutan, but the Bhutanese vehicle cannot come to. So again, then suspicion is created. So even if we have signed very beautiful agreement to 
work it then. In practice, they did not work. So what we now see is one of the problems is like the federal system in India, maybe after we go to the federal structure, we will have more problem too. So it's a central agreement and Bihar has its rule and Uttar Pradesh has its own rule. So Nepal cannot, uh, and Bhutan and Bangladesh cannot deal with all provincial government. We, we only can deal with the uh, central government and it is fine. If the central government and the Bihar's government are from the same party, it's okay, no problem. If we can even get these facilities from the embassy here. But if the parties are different, and then it's really. If you approach the central government, you will be in hurdle in the provincial government. If you deal with the provincial government, and the hurdle will be in the central government. So it's an inter internal political, uh, political uh, Diversity itself is also a problem. So this is another very important thing that uh, these things could not could not be very uh, smoothly work. Uh, so let me go for uh, regional personality kind of thing. I already explained a lot, uh, and this is what is very in 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 interesting. Is like uh, summit of the heads of the state or the government. It is supposed to take place every year. So in 32 years, it's only 18 summits took place. And last year, it was supposed to take place in Islamabad, and it is because of, uh, what is the operation, what's called like uh, surgical, surgical, surgical operation. operation. It's because of the surgical operation, India did not want to go to Pakistan, and since India spelled out that it's not possible for me to go to Pakistan, then Bangladesh, which have been having such a terrible crisis between Pakistan and Bangladesh, so Bangladesh is said that, okay, we will not also go. And then Afghanistan also pulled the footage there. But then the Prime Minister, who is the chair of SARC, because Nepal is chairing, our Prime Minister, he, nobody knows that why he is busy and for what he is busy away. Okay, sometimes he is busy to make his daughter win the uh, municipality election. Sometimes he is busy with uh, 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 distributing monies to his cattle and then he didn't, even did not go to Delhi nor he sent the foreign minister to go to Delhi and then find out some way if not in India okay Nepal could do the conference again and then next in the conference probably they could make arrangement to make it in uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Pakistan but question is not the summit and which place not important here again the question is like India does not want to lead SAR, Pakistan does not want to lead the SAR, and a small country cannot lead the SAR. So question is like, have this association, but dysfunctional, is meeting or uh, addressing the interest, best of interest of all the government. So that fair. Council of Minister, they meet frequently, they do nothing. Standing committee, there is a standing committee, it meets for a couple of hours, it doesn't do anything. And then there are technical committees, they also don't do anything. Secretariat of the association, this is the most pathetic part. What is very interesting is like, there, there are, when uh, South Block wants to get rid of some official over there, it's considered not important, then he is transferred to SAC Secretariat as the director from India. When Bangladesh thinks that this guy needs to be punished because he is not working good, then he comes to SAR. And a joint secretary level of the staff becomes the general secretary. He or she even cannot go to the prime minister's office to meet. No, they can meet with the foreign ministers in the SAR. So this is not a secretariat in itself. So this is a kind of uh, uh, a small setting on one tape low profile officials from the countries they meet in Kathmandu and the money is definitely they get in the, in the, in the global pair and since uh, they become international even the guy who is a Nepali is a director in SAC secretary he can go to Sorti override the Sorti hotel to play the gambling okay so casino so the, they go to casino play casino and then they come back because they have nothing to work they have no work to do so this is how Secretariat is playing no role at all. So now the question there is like, how do you, uh, how do you uh, actually make this uh, institution work smoothly? In my opinion, it's a time for the South Asian people. 
It's not the government. If you develop people to people association, people to people kind of uh, uh, interactions, if you would develop a kind of trust among the people, among professionals, for example, like uh, among judges, among doctors, among lawyers, among universities, probably a smooth kind of uh, feeling to each other the threats and the perceived threats and the suspicions, they have been looming large in the region and uh, uh, the kind of thing uh, uh, that happens may be at risk. But the attitude and the culture of the salvation people. Also a big problem. Gentlemen, can you come here? So let me, let me give you a game to play. Who has salvation? This one says, okay, what did you hear? What did he say? Oh, why you laugh? Why you laugh? What did he say? I love you. I love you. And so this is our attitude. We say something. What is the what is the, the best way to do the interaction? Very close interactions. This is one of the reasons I agree to bring you over here and then discuss so that you can understand the true problem. Why governments have been banned to do it is a question. Why governments are not encouraging people to do it? I just, uh, three months before travel in Pakistan, I went to many parts of Pakistan, but I didn't hear any individual Pakistani opposing India, criticizing India, and I just to taste a taxi driver who was taking me to hotel. I said, how is Pakistan now? He said that, and what I said was like, uh, it's India is always creating a problem to you. How long this Majeme Jaira? Okay, I wanted to instigate him to learn his, uh, to learn his opinion. What he says is like, oh, what he says is like, Basta me wo nahi hai sir. Nahi hai sir. Indians are kuch nahi kar rahe hai. Sab American the. उन्होंने ये आतंकवाद को जन्म दिया और वो चले गए वो आतंकवाद भी जा रहा है सो मेरे तो इंडिया में इतने दोस्त हैं कि हम लोग तो दिन में एक बार टेलीफोन करते हैं दिस इज व्हाट द पाकिस्तान इज देन आई गो टू अ रेस्टोरेंट एंड देन आई फ्रेंकली डिस्कस आर इंडियन प्रॉब्लम इन पाकिस्तान दे सेड दैट नो एंड देयर वाज अ वेरी बिग ऑरेंज शॉप वेयर आई परचेज सम ऑरेंज एंड आई सेड दैट आई एम अ नेपाली and you are charging this price. How would you charge if I was an Indian? He said, Oh, to wait, sir, come to a Indian killer, Nepal killer. Then Nepal to Aki Mitra, Nia to Aki to Dusmana. To Kashi price, eh? No, come on, put I, sir, for India, Amara Dusmana. So this is what the local feeling. Who is fighting? The government people. Should I be told that? When they have to, or election to be, owned by the political party in India, then what they try to find out is like, how to fight a war with Pakistan, vice versa. And when Pakistan political party has to win the election, and they will start bombarding and firing in the, in the uh, LOC. So it's not a problem of people. So my therefore suggestion always is like, a, increase more communication somewhere. But what I see very bad is like when uh, I see sometimes the, uh, the 
television news and then uh, these uh, programs in the Indian and television television and you can see in the down in your comments you know what they write it's like you Pakistani bloody and what he likes like you Indian bloody why even really educated students are doing it so until we change the attitude from people to people level you cannot make South Asian regional cooperation a perfect uh, kind of uh, uh, venture. But if you think that you can develop this part without such cooperation, that is another bit. No, not possible. It is not possible. If some countries remain in problem, in crisis, in conflict, and one country in this region wants to develop, that is simply a myth. It's not possible. So therefore, question is, how politically we can come closer and then address this crisis at the government level? And most importantly, how can we encourage the people-to-people -people interactions among the people, organize more regional type of cooperation, and then therefore we can address that, okay? So, uh, it was five years before, when we were doing uh, Residential School on Economic and Social Rights, Economic, <coughs> Social and Development Rights. We had uh, nine Indian students and three Pakistani students. So at some point we thought that let's have a picnic. So one day we thought we would be happy to have a picnic and since we were 50 people so we purchased to very nice goat to slaughter and cook. So now problem there were six Bengali and three Pakistani who needed to down. For Hindus, no problem. You cut from down or up, that's fine. Meat doesn't become difference. But from Pakistani and Bengali, because they were Muslim, so they needed to slaughter. So who does it now? The question is like, we had a professor from Bangladesh. He knew how to order Allah Akbar when goat is slaughtered, okay? So he ordered the war, and the Pakistani guys slaughtered the throat, and Indian boys were catching the legs of the war. So that's possible. If that's possible here, and they become friends. After that, they become very good friends. So, question therefore is like uh, developing people to people interactions and association. And I often say that, okay, fall in love. Get more people married with each other. So take Indian can take a couple of Nepalese girls this time and Nepalese can keep a couple of Indian girls. That's fine, no problem. <laughs> this will address the problem like European Union emails who stronger because they think we have our territory but we are European. You can think what probably would happen if European Union would not have formed that strongness, what America would have done to them right now. So European together now defending themselves and say that okay, no Trump, no Trump. Okay. So they are now thinking, is NATO essential? Until NATO exists, so there is a threat. So why should I be the part of American uh, war game? So that's what some states have started saying in Europe. So American, therefore, had to follow what bigger European Union said. So Brexit, what is the reason? If you break European Union, then who prevails? America. Because individual country, they have to be uh, surrendered. They, they should be surrendering to the United States, therefore. With all individual country, American will be taking control. Sure, British, were instigated by Americans to come out and destroy European Union. And that was what you could see the French election just a uh, uh, few weeks before. How stronger kind of appeal by the radicals, by the ultra-rightists were making to get the France out and again funding came from the United States. So this is the kind of thing. So powerful Union, European Union is Despite this economic growth rate going down to 0% and living in austerity today, they still are powerful. But we are in South Asia, almost making average 5% economic growth rate. 
Pakistan is also going up. Bangladesh almost at 7%. Sri Lanka almost 7 percent India 9%. Nepal has come to the 7%. So we are making a very good economic growth. But despite this vibrancy of economic growth, bigger population, 25-32% population, and most fertile land in the world, most resourceful land uh, in the world, and the, and the part of the world which has the largest proportion of the youth population, we still are poor. So who do you then blame? Do you blame America? No. So this is therefore South Asia, uh, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation is an indispensable organization. So what is my suggestion? You can take this and you can read. What I say is like, let's transfer it to the state of community, the community, uh, the community of the countries rather than system of states. So until uh, 1992, 1993, same problem was suffered by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. So exactly it was like that. But you could see there was a war between Vietnam and Cambodia, and then border tensions between Cambodia and Vietnam. Uh, Thais were taking the uh, very old uh, uh, historical uh, historical uh, goods from Cambodia to Thailand and it was one of the most fragile country South Korea and North Korea and all these kind of fights uh, so therefore it was a serious situation but then South Asian, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations was not also working as a very viable institution so how did they pick up the people? the people from Southeast Asia Force the government to come and create another charter which is called uh, an accord. So according to accord, what South Asian nations did was like they established a very strong kind of uh, uh, secretary. So they appointed the Gen secretary general of the South Asian countries uh, with the posture of the former prime minister. So that means the Secretary General can go to any country, can talk to the Prime Minister, and can discuss the problem in the South Asian countries. And uh, very interestingly, they started negotiating problems between the countries. So, they forced Cambodia and Vietnam to come to table and resolve their problem. So eventually, the problem was resolved. Then a very uh, important crisis was there. What to do with those uh, Khmer Rouge generals who had uh, slaughtered millions of people and therefore they requested, the ASEAN requested with the uh, uh, unanimous decisions for the United Nations to come and install the uh, crime, uh, uh, war crime tribunal in Cambodia and these people have been punished by the war crime. Uh, uh, tribunals. So today, South Asia, Southeast Asian Association of Cooperation of these countries have now become a community of the country. So it can be that. So now probably Gita told you, they have been recently thinking to establish a Southeast Asian Human Rights Court. So if there is a violation of human rights in Singapore, you can go to that court and you can file. But see how many human rights violations there is found. Every day, there is a violation of human rights. Every day, there is a domestic violence or the violence against women. Community to community fight and uh, someone is supported by the state and another, another is isolated. And that therefore becomes a matter of discontent in India, discontent in Nepal, and discontent in Bangladesh, in also Pakistan. In my world, for example, I go to Bangladesh so many times. When they, in, when I'm in Bangladesh and some Hindus come to contact me, and he knows that I am a Nepali, that day is the finest day for him. He is always with me. He feels that he is secure. He talks with me. So that's a kind of uh, kind of Bangladesh. What happens every day in Bangladesh is like a girl coming from the school is kidnapped by two Slavic boys and she is taken to the home 
And that's all. Fine. Nothing has to be done more than that. Then the Hindu family will disagree to take the girl to the home. And what they say is like, you marry her or do whatever, but we will not take her back. So then she will be forced to marry with the Islamic boy. So he already has a wife. So that's a mistake. So there is a there is a kind of situation in Bangladesh like a Hindu migrating from Muslim neighborhood to more Hindu areas, and the community is became, becoming so divided. So that's the situation. You can see in Pakistan, it it is not possible for even you to uh, go to a university if you do not uh, do not become very fluent in Urdu language. You should learn Urdu language to go to university. They cannot fight. So even a Hindu has to learn Urdu language to go to the university. And if you do not want to go to this university, the state-run university, then you have to go to the private institution where the education is provided in English, but they are very expensive. They are very expensive. Either you have to be able to pay the tuition fee for the private institution, or you have to study the Urdu. So minorities' rights are very much uh, uh, they're very much suppressed. In Nepal also there is a problem. As minorities have not been well dealt with. Malaysi community still feels very bad. Yes, that's true. Though development activities have been more in Madhis, like 63% of our university colleges in Madhis, but only 38% are students and 63% of the public. And then rest in the hills, so about 60% of the population, is in here. Why? Because there is less law and order. Why less law and order? Because in these districts, it's not like indigenous people get to rule those communities. Police inspector is from here. The, the chief, like uh, you call it uh, collector, we call it CDO, chief district officer. He is from here. So everybody is from the hill, but people think that why we are not able to rule ourselves? So that's the kind of thing. So economically, they are far better in situation because of the territory, land, and all that. But it's because of the state is isolating them in the, the state machinery, so they feel very bad. So that's a problem. In India also. In India also, like the, uh, the northeastern provinces, they are very angry. People feel that, the military. So a couple of people last, uh, a couple of years before in the residential school, they were from Delhi, who came from Bodo area and then uh, Manipur area, they were here. So they described that how military used to raid them. So military, police, bureaucracy in South Asia is very, very ruthless. And if a state does not want to take this case, there is no other option. National Women's Rights Commissions are tickless law. They do not bark. They only bark. They bark a lot. Okay? Every time they are barking and getting more funding, and they are visiting all the time other countries. So they don't, they don't have kids to buy. So that's a question. If you are able to develop original mechanism, maybe these ruthless government, these human rights violating governments would have some sanctions against those kind of things. So with South Asians have been developed. So to end at this point, what I would like to say is like, the only solution to rescue SAR from this situation is to start with changing its star charter and make SAR as a community of state, as a regional institution rather than system of the states there. Or sometime when there is a crisis, this institution can be effective. Nepal had 10 years long blood set, bloody insurgency. 17,000 people were killed. And SAR was helpless. It could have not been. Almost 25 years in Sri Lanka, there was a bloody fight, and almost 100,000 people died. SAR played no role. In Burma and also uh, Bangladesh, it, it played no role. Even in India today, you can see militaries have been killing people in the name of Naxalists. I don't know whether they are Naxalists or not. And these Naxalists, so called Naxalists, have been putting ambush and killing police. So we hear the news even today, like 16 police officers abused by the Naxalists. And then 100 Naxalists killed by the uh, military, something like that. So these kind of things are there. And therefore, a lot of people bark 
A lot of people who speak, and then probably it's one of the reasons because there is a problem. Arundhati Rai in India speaks that India is committing a big decline in Kashmir, and the government has to declare that she is anti national. If she is not an anti national anyway, she is a good writer, that's what I think. She writes a very good book. But even a good writer, it's because of the problem. So, root cause is not what Arundhati Rai writes. Root cause is what is happening over there. Either people are bad or the military is bad. Or both of them are bad. Or both of them are not. So the question crisis is there. So human rights mechanism, reasonable mechanism can improve this kind of situation. So therefore, I think if you develop an idea like that, let's make SAT a viable institution to bring collaboration. And at least we can raise our trade up to 30%. The trade of the SAC is countries themselves bringing the, uh, bringing the trade at the 30%. What would be the result is like the price will go down. Because the price that uh, we pay to the uh, generator, when we had, a, when we had a, uh, this road setting for a couple of years, I think uh, millions of generators were brought from Korea, Japan, uh, Czechoslovakia, and other countries. So, if you depend on the trade in South Asia, like the Indian good would be much more cheaper to the Nepalese, and Nepalese uh, vegetable butter would be much more cheaper to Indian over there than you bring it from some other countries. Okay? So, if we raise the trade in business, like uh, people would be much more in comfort, but that would not help the government because there is a big commission. So, so we sometimes uh, do exactly like what he said, I love you and I want to marry you. The information reached to her that I love you. So if you don't marry, why you love? <laughs> the question is that. Okay. If you love, do marry. Don't make a law, only a time. So that's why our diplomatic, uh, our diplomatic relations are just pleaser to come and drink the wine, but not to help us. People, so let's make an effort at a very small level to make the SAR make functional. And uh, a guy uh, is an Indian, probably non-resident Indian in uh, London, who has wrote a very good uh, book. Small is good. Some small, is good. small is good. No, no, small is good. Small is good means if you do small thing, that is good. Okay. Something Chopra, Deepak Chopra, read his book, Small is Good, is a beautiful book. What he describes is like, don't think big, they don't make impact. Do small thing, they will make a lasting change. So if we start doing this kind of small thing, many series of students coming, meeting, talking, and recognizing each other's institution, that's how we can make bigger number of impression, positive impression in the place of negative impression. So, SAR needs that kind of uh, treatment, that kind of medicines. Okay? So, let's make SAR a good forum, if not at the government level at this point, at the people level, at the university level, at the professionals level. Therefore, more trust can be developed. And one day, like Southeast Asia, SAR, the South Asian countries will be obliged or compelled to make SAR a more stronger institution playing role in the problem of the South Asia, promoting trade and promoting integration of the people and promoting economic development in the region. Therefore, we can be more good friends in the next to come. So Pakistan and India, once they develop, probably they will have no mind. So to hunger dog, to hungry dog fight a lot. Okay? When two hungry dog get a lot of good food, they snore and sleep. And then animals outside the bars, chick, skin, go around and then feed themselves in the rice field. So that's what the chicks are uh, people. So let these two people, uh, two countries, together with other countries, become rich so that they will sleep, not fight. So with this, uh, I think uh, after this, we will have a very extensive discussion on it. So you're supposed to make your make your presentations, your arguments, your questions. Two gentlemen are here, very young professionals. Uh, they are good teachers of KSR, but uh, I want them to be very wounded today and go back to with a lot of wounds. 
because they have to learn to teach more strongly in the desk. And they should learn that, oh, it's not easy to teach, okay? Make them throw stones on them. Mercilessly. Okay, thank you very much.